All right, uh, uh, thank you very much for having me. It's a great pleasure to be here. I always have fun here in Utah. And this is a, a terrific paper, and I'm uh, happy to discuss it. Um, so essentially, let me start with some praise. Uh, the paper provides a very elegant, uh, uh, dynamic, cheap, cheap talk. In, in, a, in a problem that is very familiar to us, it is a, it's essentially a canonical uh, real option exercise problem. Uh, and the, the, the analysis is, is masterfully done. And, and actually, when you read the paper, it's a, it, a, it displays very clear thinking throughout. And it's, it's, the intuition is very well explained. So, so it's a fun read, so I recommend it. I think it's a step forward um, for dynamic uh, organization economics. Uh, the, there's several results that are different from what, what, what we usually get in, in, in this class of problems. Uh, for example, full communication is possible, which is not typically the case in the static, uh, in static cheap talk games. Uh, delegation may not help, and again, in static uh, uh, cheap talk games, it typically helps. Um, and uh, exercise of this uh, real option uh, is delayed uh, weekly. Uh, and interestingly, even if the expert has an uh, early exercise bias, so, so, which is sort of interesting and maybe counterintuitive, so I'll, I'll uh, talk a little bit about that. Uh, let me start just uh, on a lighter note. So, th so this paper is about authority, and I just want to uh, be absolutely clear. I do not speak with authority on this topic. Uh, I, I'm not an expert in, in, in this particular area. So nevertheless, I, the hope is that I'll, I'll offer a little more than babbling. Uh, and not just cheap shots, but, but hopefully what I'm going to say is uh, uh, going to communicate some information, although it will not perfectly communicate uh, uh, the information. And my own personal bias is towards mechanism design. Um, but in any case, Avner and Jim uh, uh, delegated the discussion to me, so, so here it goes. By the way, if you, if you don't uh, think these jokes are funny, then this is a good time to pay attention. <laughs> All right. Uh, what is cheap talk? Uh, 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 cheap talk is talk, and it is cheap. Uh, what is talk? Talk is a plain, unmediated conversation uh, uh, that is non-binding. And it's cheap in the sense that it is uh, payoff irrelevant. So it doesn't come with a cost. It is not like a signaling model where I go to school uh, to, show, uh, uh, to try to show how smart I am. Um, it's also not mechanism design, mainly because there's no design. Uh, 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 the payoffs instead are exogenously given. And uh, you can actually think about it as being a, a, a design of the communication uh, a game. Uh, but in particular, it's no contract. So uh, here, there's essentially no contracting. So I'll talk a little bit about that. And um, here's the basic structure. Basic structure goes like this. Uh, there's a sender, an expert, uh, an agent, uh, if you like, who knows something. So he has private information. There is a receiver uh, who, who doesn't know anything, is uninformed, uh, the principal, uh, who does something. So he's going to take an action. And essentially, all we can do is communicate. So there's, a communi there's communication where the expert can send a message uh, to the principal, so give the principal advice. Okay. Um, so the, the standard model is, is the Crawford Sobel model. So let me just like uh, review in, in, in a, a minute or two how, how this works. So the expert knows some theta, some parameter that lives between 0 and 1, uh, and there's uniform distribution. The principal wants to choose some value between 0 and 1, some value y, and he doesn't like to deviate from theta, so he gets a quadratic loss from being off of theta. The expert has a bias b and also gets a quadratic loss, but around theta plus b. Okay? And so, uh, the, and here again, the only thing you can do is the expert can, uh, so the expert sees theta and can announce it to the principal. And the question is, uh, where will he do so? Well, there's a babbling equil uh, there's a babble equilibrium where advice is just noise. Doesn't mean anything. It's like me telling you that yesterday I skied the baldy shoot. Completely irrelevant. <laughs> All right. Um, more interestingly and remarkably, cheap talk can help. Uh, for example, uh, suppose you, the bias of the agent is one sixth. Uh, then uh, the following is an equilibrium. There's only two messages. Tell me whether theta is below one third or above one third. How does that work? Um, so there's essentially only two things you can say. Uh, if it's uh, below one third, what will the principal do? Well, then he knows it's below one third if that's an equilibrium as, a, as conjecture. So he's going to pick one sixth halfway in between. And if it's above one third, the principal will pick uh, uh, two thirds. How, the, how is that incentive compatible? Like, well, think about the guy who is, sees one third. He sees one third, but he has a bias of one sixth, so he likes one half 
oh look, one half is exactly halfway between these two actions, he's indifferent, so the marginal guy is indifferent, and the other guys have a strict preference, and it works. Right? So remarkably, you can actually communicate. Now, what are the basic results? Information can be communicated, but never perfectly. Uh, and the larger the bias is, the, 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 the less commun is communicated, so the larger the loss. Okay? So that's, that's the standard setup, uh, so, so keep that in mind. All right. The paper here, the, the model here is a real option exercise problem. And it's very, it's, it's uh, uh, very nicely done. It, it, like essentially, the model fits on one slide. So there's this uh, observable Brownian motion that evolves, and uh, uh, we can at some point exercise the option at some cost i. Uh, think of it as investment. If we exercise, the principal gets uh, theta xt uh, minus i. Uh, the trouble with the agent is that he gets the same payoff plus B, which is how much does he like to exercise. B positive means the agent likes exercising, so he has a preference for early exercise. Uh, B minus means, uh, B negative means uh, pay the agent doesn't like to exercise, and so uh, 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 prefers uh, late exercise. Now it's a cheap talk game. The agent knows theta. Theta lives. Uh, essentially, for most of the paper, theta also lives on the unit interval. And by the way, the agent knows this at time zero. So the agent at time zero knows theta. Okay? Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to do a dynamic cheap talk game, so cheap talk over time. And then um, we restrict the, the, the message space, and this is without loss for threshold uh, exercise equilibrium. We restrict the message space to essentially just the agent at some point saying, advising you as the principal to exercise. All right. So, so, uh, but again, this is without loss in this particular class of uh, equilibria. So, uh, what happens if the agent uh, uh, dislikes uh, exercising, so prefers late exercise? Then, uh, what, can, what happens is full uh, you can actually fully communicate uh, uh, the information, but the exercise is delayed. Um, it, the, it turns out that that solution is equivalent to what the uh, principal can do, even if he has commitment. Okay. And in fact, it's also true, at least when theta is zero, it, you can actually also uh, uh, implement the same allocation with, uh, with delegating. Essentially, uh, in the late exercise case, it's very simple. You just tell the agent, you pick. Okay? Um, if, he, if it's early exercise instead, uh, what happens? It becomes much more like a standard cheap talk game. You have uh, partial communication. And uh, interestingly, exercise is weakly delayed. Actually, in the, in the best equilibrium, it's unbiased, uh, but that's still weakly delayed. And so it's weakly delayed despite the fact that the agent likes to exercise early, so I'll talk a little bit more about that. A commitment, uh, it, it, the, the allocation is worse than commitment, so you can do better with commitment, and delegation can be, can be good or bad. Just as an aside, uh, 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 there are some restrictions on equilibria. Uh, we are looking at a pure strategy mark of threshold exercise stationary equilibria. And uh, you could be a stickler about that, uh, but I'm not going to be. Uh, there's also some restrictions on, on uh, beliefs. Uh, roughly, and this is a slight exaggeration, roughly, if you tell me, give me a message that no one should be sending in equilibrium, I'm going to ignore it. Uh, this, I, again, we could uh, uh, you know, uh, kick out on that. I won't. All right. Uh, so let's think about the value of del de delayed communication. So, it, you, it, one reaction you have is like, I don't understand that the, 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 the uh, agent knows this uh, theta at time zero. Why not just communicate at time zero? Well, um, the, 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 uh, the issue is that principal cannot commit uh, to use information. So if you communicate at time zero, uh, the principal will always do uh, what is uh, op conditionally optimal if he has, uh, if he has the authority uh, to take the action. Um, so the principal can never commit to, to, to delaying uh, if conditional on his information exercise is optimal. So, so in fact, it's, it's, so the static and dynamic case are not optimal. The dynamic case, by communicating later, essentially, I can give you information, then uh, uh, that allows the principal to commit because he doesn't know until such time as it is communicated. Um, so essentially what happens is by the time the agent tells the principal to exercise, the principal says, I wish I would have exercised uh, uh, sooner, but of course it's too late. And so that helps with commitment. So time is of the essence, uh, uh, which is novel here and, and, and very interesting, I think. Uh, there's also, and I couldn't wrap my head around this, I was trying to understand whether there was some relation to, to, to essentially long cheap talk, because essentially communicating later is like, like sending another message. But, but uh, uh, in any case, it might be interesting to pursue that, but I'm not going to uh, 
say more about that. So let, let me talk a little bit about commitment and mechanism design. Um, again, so the agent cannot, uh, uh, delay communication uh, um, allows the agent to commit to late exercise. Uh, so in fact, that means that with late exercise, commitment and advising uh, uh, are a equivalent. Uh, with early exercise, on the other hand, commitment does better uh, and allows early exercise. And in fact, that is, that is at times optimal. And otherwise, without, uh, uh, without commitment, you can't do that. Now, now what, I was, what, what I was looking for, so the, the commitment solution here, essentially all, all it allows the, the, the principal to do is to commit to a particular uh, um, exercise policy. Uh, uh, we, uh, putting my mechanism design hat on, I thought it would be interesting to also think more generally about what is the optimal contract in this world if I also allow transfer at least from the principal to the agent at time zero, uh, subject to some uh, uh, lower bound here. Um, why is it interesting? It's interesting because, this, uh, just to remind you, the standard result on contracting in, cheap in the cheap talk setup says that full revelation is always feasible, so you can always get the guy to tell you everything, but it's never optimal, too costly. Um, and also that neither no contract, which is what we're studying here, nor delegation are ever optimal, so there's always some contracting. And so it would be interesting to sort of see what is that benchmark in, the, in this particular environment. Uh, and then, of course, you could think about uh, uh, contracting with and without commitment, but, but uh, uh, again, I'm going to uh, not uh, say much more about this. Uh, let's talk briefly about the, the value of delegation. Um, so delegation, uh, what is delegation? Again, it's just essentially the principle telling the agent, uh, uh, giving the agent formal authority, which is essentially telling the agent, why don't you pick? Okay. Uh, well, it's, it's e easy to see what the agent will do. Uh, what will the agent do when, 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 when he gets to pick? Well, he's just going to pick whatever is optimal for him because there's no other contracting or anything else that we can do. So, so if he uh, uh, dislikes exercise, he's going to exercise late. If he likes it, he's going to exercise early. So here's the value of, of, of delegation. So if you have a late exercise bias, so uh, Andre stressed that with a late exercise bi bias delegation, uh, uh, is, is not optimal. I'm going to put a slightly different uh, spin on this. When, 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 the, when theta lower bar is zero, actually, then advising and dele delegation are equivalent. When theta upper bar, uh, is theta lower bar is, is positive, then uh, advising dominates a delegation, and that's novel. Essentially, what happens is if, if you've worked down and if only very low types are left, the principal just does the, the uh, does the action. This though reminded me of a, of a paper by Holmstrom on, on optimal delegation uh, that showed essentially that uh, optimal delegation that limits the scope of the agent's action uh, is typically optimal in this uh, type of cheap talk games. And here actually the, 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 the result here has a very similar flavor and I think it would be nice for the, uh, for the authors to make this connection. Uh, with the early exercise, again, what happened is uh, when, the, when the bias is really small, when the bias is really small, the, the agent and principal almost agree, but you can never give the guy an early, a, a commit to early exercise, but if you delegate, you can. And so that happens to be uh, a delegation actually dominates in that case. Uh, when, uh, when you have a large bias, then, then uh, uh, advising dominates. And again, that's, uh, that, uh, that's, uh, that's novel and uh, interesting. Um, all right, so uh, it, it, the last thing is like, it, uh, it, the questions of application. So what, what uh, in some sense, what is this uh, uh, paper really about? The applications that are being considered in the paper uh, briefly is a product launch, there's a CEO and a product manager, the product manager being the expert, the, or plan shutdown, CEO and a local manager, IPO, an eye banker and an entrepreneur, or drilling an oil well, uh, a CEO and a regional manager. Uh, now, what, what I felt like is like, how plausible are these uh, applications? I, I, it, it seems like, again, like in this class of models, there's essentially no contracting. It seems a bit uh, uh, drastic. So, so I think it would be, uh, it, the paper essentially says like, look, this is reduced form, uh, we are studying the reduced form implications of an existing revenue sharing agreement. Uh, but I think it would be worthwhile to spend a little more time about thinking like in what exact, in what context uh, is, this the, is this the right model? So where, like, typically this is, uh, is uh, we use these models often in, in, in the context of, of, a, of a board uh, 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 interacting with a, 
uh, uh, with, a, with a CEO, something like that, but I, I think that would be uh, useful to spend just a little more time uh, thinking about what uh, uh, applications. So here's my uh, short version. It's a significant contribution to dynamic organization economics. Here's my little note to Ken Singleton, uh, uh, accept it as is. Where is Ken? Uh, uh, if, if, you, if you press me for, for uh, wh what else would I like to see, I would like to see a little more discussion of applications. I would like to see the optimal contract with transfers, and I would like to see the relation to Holmstrom's 1984 uh, uh, delegation, which limits the scope uh, of the action. Thank you very much.